Hello and welcome back to Suburban Hunt 365. I am DJ. We are back in the reloading room again today. Now, for those of you that have followed this channel for a while, you know it's been a little over a month since the last time I posted a video. And for that, I do apologize. I've had some few things going on. But guys, for your patience, which I do I truly appreciate your patience, I have given you what you've asked for. We are actually digging into the ballistics gel. So guys, this right here is FBI 10% gel block. All right, this is the clear ballistics gel. It is fantastic reusable gel. And you may be able to tell this one already has a ballistic channel in it. And that is because what we are doing on this channel today, we are looking into my favorite and one of the most accurate projectiles we've had so far. And that is the ELDX. This particular one is a 340 grain, if I can get my fat fingers out of the way. 340 grain projectile. There's a big mammy jammers right there. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using one of the most readily available powders. And it actually ended up being one of the more accurate powders, which is a 777 grain pellets. We're gonna be using both a 100 and 150 grain load to see how they do. Like I said, guys, I just had to pick one of them to start. The ELDX actually had some pretty good groups across all of the different powders, but one of the best ones was the 777. Uh, so we're gonna begin using that at a 100 and 150 grain charge. We will, of course, be running our favorite Federal 209A primers, and we are going to be using the same CVA Optima V2 uh, with the Konus with the three to nine by 40 on top of that. Now. Some of the guys have asked me in previous videos how I am loading the ELDX. And originally I had just used a regular ramrod to push through there. But what I started doing is running the ELRs. For those of you that know that if you buy the PowerBot ELRs, they come with this nifty little tip because they are so pointy. And when you're running these, it just makes it nice. That way when you start pressing on these, it doesn't cause any damage to the front of this tip here. So I do in fact use the ELR tips uh, to put in my ELDXs. So hopefully that clears that up for you. Now, what we're gonna be doing, this is going to be a 50 and a 100 yard test. So in this video, we're gonna start off with the 50. That's what I've got in front of me, is the 50 yard test to see how these things do ballistically. That's what a lot of guys have asked. They've asked for comparisons between the ELDX, the FTX. I personally wanna do the, the Federal Board Drivers, uh, but let's find out what they do. Will they expand? How do they react? So you got a deer up close, 50 yards, All right, what do we got here? Not terrible. Definitely got some jacketing right here. Let's see here, where's my handy dandy? Looks like the wound channel, but inch and a half ends where the major damage starts we got some shrapnel right at four inches we got a couple pieces at 10 inches and 11 and a half inches now I did pass all the way through this was the hundred grain of triple seven so let's see here we got a clean pass through we got one oh we got all kinds of goodies in here Look at that. So we got all kinds of goodies in that. Let's see what we got. We got anything in number two? I don't see anything in number two. No. All right, guys, that was pretty awesome. I have to admit, it actually blew out the underneath of that table that I, that makes you a table that I had. 
and it was just awesome. Now this was only 100 grains at 50 yards. So I can see why that doe in the previous hunting video just dropped right where she was. It's extremely, extremely violent and it just works beautifully. So looking in this, we have about an inch and a half right here. You can see that this is the entry side here. So it enters here about an inch and a half. And as the wound channel starts to spread, we've got, let's see here, we're looking at about five inches from here to here, about the main big part of that wound channel right there. And then it comes down and it actually ex exited out of this side into those water barrels where we did in fact pick up the scrap you see here. So this is what was left inside that barrel, that was inside that, excuse me. And this is what was left inside that jug. So what I wanna do is I wanna get what I can out of this and then we'll actually weigh these leftover parts against the actual projectile itself to see what kind of retention we have. But these things are all over the place. So I don't know how much we're gonna be able to actually uh, pick up. I did not find the core of this thing in the grass or anywhere near on the range. So I'm not really sure what happened, but as you can see, there is a lot of shrapnel. You can't really see on this side. All right, guys, we're gonna go and flip this over. I'm gonna tell you right now, this gel will absolutely pick up anything. And that's kind of, it doesn't really pick up as well on camera, but there is a ton of dirt from that table underneath this block here. But you can see the wound channel here. You see really how much wider that wound channel is right here. Because again, you have that one and a half and then that just nice five inch long. Let's see how wide this thing is right here. Let's put the little tape measure on there. And we're looking at, and this was after it went down. We're looking at two inches from here to here. So we have two inches of wound channel this way, five inches down deep into here. Uh, and it's, like I said, it does go all the way across the block. And this block is a 16 inch block. All right guys, so for 100 grains at 50 yards, I think that was extremely effective round. Uh, the projectile out of the muzzle was reading 1534 uh, feet per second, so 1,534 feet per second. And what I was able to pull out of that gel block was just this little amount, not a whole lot more than what you saw us pull. Uh, that came in at 71.4 grains. Again, this is a 340 grain projectile. So that projectile, that core went somewhere. I was just not able to find it. So now we've got a decent idea. So a one and a half inches in, a five inch wound channel, two inches wide. That's what we're dealing with. 100 grains, triple seven, 350 grain projectile Hornady ELDX. Let's go ahead and let's see what happens when we put that up to 150 grains. That one's just a percussion. So this one's clearly a lot higher. We've got... A wound channel started about an inch in. You got a pretty decent sized piece of copper there, about two and a half inches in. A bunch of shrapnel throughout here. You see how it kind of comes up and then exited here on top where it caught the top of this one. Busted into this one. We've got a good bit of pieces. Let's go ahead and drain this out here. Basically, this is what we have left. So this is the 150 grains of triple seven. So you can see that the wound channel is quite a bit bigger 
quite a bit bigger. This jug, like I said, this jug was sacrificed because of the amount of percussion. So what was left went into here. All right, guys, this is the side view. As it was sitting at the table, you have the entry hole here. You have this massive wound channel. Man, this thing comes way back in here before it slows down. I mean, that is insane. Uh, it's hard to tell from the side angle. From the side angle, you can see that the width of this thing is about the same as two inches this way. But man, look what happens when I do that. That is just a beautiful wound channel. Absolutely gorgeous. So basically, let's look here. I think we have the same, uh, that's actually about one inch. So let me pull this over here. So we'll just do this. So you have one inch from here to here. That is when you started the expansion. And then we move over. And look at this. This is starting right there. Comes all the way across. That's an 11 inch wound channel. This main cavity right here is eight inches. So you have eight inches across this guy right here. And look at that thing, man. That is a solid two inch on both sides. It is just a massive wound channel compared to the 150 grain. Uh, not to say that 150, or excuse me, compared to the 100 grain. Not to say that the 100 grain didn't work, but 150 grains works so much better that I, there's no doubt. We'll throw up a side-by-side -side picture of these two real quick, and you can see exactly the 150 grain versus the 100 grain. Now, when we looked at the barrels, or excuse me, we, now, when we looked at the jugs, this is what we were able to find in the water jugs. This is the lead. Uh, there looks to be copper jacketing inside here. I don't see that there's a whole lot of leads per se inside this. Um, there's a little bit in there. You see a little bit in here. About right there, you see some lead. But most of it went through because this was a complete pass through all the way across. Same as the hunter grain. No surprise there. But just how much more of this wound channel is there with the 150 grain. So let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and pull out what we can of the shrapnel on this one and see how much more. Now again, because we couldn't find the core, I don't think we're gonna get a whole real good look at the retention of this thing just because of how much this thing splinters, man. Uh, it's just, my gosh, look at that. So you got the copper piece there, another copper jacket here. And both of those are located right at about three inches from the entry wound. So, I mean, this thing is flying through here and it just peeled back. It just absolutely peeled back. Oh, here we go. That was actually a lot more lead than I thought. So there's another piece of the lead right there. So again, guys, I have to imagine that the bulk of this is staying together and going through, it just, we weren't able to find it down range. Uh, so these ELDXs, both with 100 grain and 150 grains, are just absolutely getting shredded apart inside there. So take that for what it's worth, guys. The, the deer has a huge wound channel, uh, but there is quite a bit of shrapnel inside this block. So looking here with everything combined, let's throw it up on the scale. And we have 62.7 for the 150 grain. All right, guys, there you have the 150 grain. Like I said, one inch, eight inch solid channel. Extends a little bit to 11 over here, but just absolutely massive wound channel with the 150. Now, this one was running at 1794, excuse me, 1794, which is exactly 260 feet per second faster than the 100 grain charge and you can see the difference at 50 yards. All right, guys, if you guys have stuck with us this far, I cannot say thank you enough for being here and being a part of what we're doing here on Suburban Hunt 365. Guys, this is actually a pretty good thing for using 150 grains because of the amount of energy going down range. I know the recoil can suck when you're out of range, but guys, when you're out of range, you notice the recoil. When you're in a deer stand, you really don't notice it that much. So with the amount of energy that's being released 
into the animal at 50 yards. I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen at 100 yards, which is going to be our next video. This one, we did 50. The next one that's coming up is at 100. And then we will compare the 100 yards and then we'll compare both the 50 and the 100 yard results. And we'll see what kind of information we come up with. Guys, again, from Suburban Hunt 365, I am DJ. Thank you so much for being here, being a part of what we're doing. Guys, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. As I always say, please comment down below. Let us know what you like, what you think, and what you'd like to see next. From Suburban Hunt 365, I'm DJ. We'll catch you guys on the next one.